Then we have these very large diodes. I already soldered one in. Hello everyone and welcome back to Arctic Retro. This is just a little short video where I'm gonna solder up this little card here with these components. Um, more on that in a while. Just give you a little bit of status. I've been sick for some days and I also uh, pretty soon going to Easter vacation. So I haven't really f done anything much uh, lying sick. So I started on the next part of this uh, Commodore 128D, which you have seen a couple of videos of before. I got it back from uh, Kjell and uh, yeah, there's something wrong with it still. So I need to figure out that, but that's another video coming sometime later. So what is this card then, you might ask? Well, it's a controller card for uh, one of those coin gambling machines that I have made a video about before. And uh, yeah, I'm building this for a friend, the same friend I repaired the previous one to. And uh, yeah, it's just a simple card. It has an Atmega 168 uh, microcontroller. Uh, which needs to be programmed, but uh, first I'm gonna solder it up. And here you see an example of such a coin uh, machine. These are from the 70s and 80s and even earlier, I think. This is currently off and it's not uh, working either, so I'm gonna take a look at that sometime later. Thing is, you place a coin here and then you hit the trigger here and the coin bounces uh, along uh, <laughs> the machine here. And if you hit uh, one of the slots, the slots here, you win the amount and that's usually below 10 Norwegian kroners, so under one dollar. And the PCB was made by PCB Way. I ordered it myself. It was uh, five US dollars for <laughs> five PCBs. Of course, the shipping costs a little bit more, but uh, yeah, just want to mention that and it looks good. So I'm just gonna solder this quickly up. There isn't much to it, I think, and uh, I'm not in the position to really test it, but uh, I'll show you at least how it goes with uh, soldering and programming the chip. I've been sick for four days and I haven't, I haven't done anything. I couldn't even watch TV, so <laughs> nothing uh, serious, but just the flu and uh, yeah. A little bit uh, stomach infection. All the components came from DigiKey and he ordered it himself. He's actually gonna try and solder up the rest of the board himself. Just gonna solder in the two little sockets first. Oops, that's the wrong socket. He ordered the wrong socket. This has uh, seven pins, it should be eight but I have a lot of those. So this card is to replace some of the old control logic in those old machines that have some electronics in them. Then I just use a little blue tack, which is, is white in this case. Keep those in place. Then for some uh, soldering. I just hold it uh, from, from the top side just to keep it uh, flush with the PCB. A little bit shaky today. Not quite well and sweating. <laughs> I am sometimes a little bit shaky on my hands anyway because, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's my age <laughs> showing. <laughs> So this is a very special type of board. I guess not many will ever make this and uh, you can find it on uh, GitHub. I'll see if I find it and link to it in the description. I'll clean my iron. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was the sockets. Probably the most work of this. There's a little interface contact there. So this goes to some form of display. And as you can see, this uh, has a relay, I think. And it also has a voltage regulator. So this card actually runs on 12 volt in, but uh, it works with uh, five volts um, internally on the, the microcontroller. So that was uh, not a perfect fitting contact. A little bit thick uh, pins for the holes, but uh, yeah, it made it through. Alright, so the, the rest is in fact just simple components, uh, some electrolyte caps, uh, diodes and uh, yeah, this relay. I need to figure out which way that goes. Well, it has three pins on one side and two on the other, so that was easy. So I'm just going to solder everything and not say that much. So these are the two regulators on this board. One is, uh, yeah, they both are LM2576T, but one is marked 5V and the other is 12V. And uh, yeah, they go in here. Just need to get the right polarity and uh, the board is uh, nicely... It has uh, markings for everything, so no chance of doing an error <laughs> as long as the marking is correct. So I wonder if these need the cooling. So the pins for the regulators were very thick and very close to each other. I think I bridged it to those there, so I'm gonna fix that. You can also use a little bit flux, but uh, yeah, it seems to be all right now. I'm going to test with the multimeter anyway. So here you can see the actual project on GitHub and here you find everything like the schematics, some information and it's made by someone called Hans J66. It's in a Norwegian text. It has the firmware and it has the various layouts and Gerber files for this card. How to install it and things like that. Here you can see it actually connects to some old counter system and uh, yeah, probably other parts as well. When building things like this, uh, it's actually important to check all the documents because there can be corrections. For example, here in the bill of materials, it actually says to replace uh, two of the resistors with some other values. We can take a closer look at the schematics and here we see that it has a ULN 2003A, the Atmega 168, and yeah, this is out to the connector. Yeah, there's a relay and there's a bridge rectifier, a couple of LEDs, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a little LM2576 chip that is uh, the regulators. Because I didn't check the bill of materials closely, I actually soldered a wrong resistor value there, and uh, I was also wondering what this resistor, because it's uh, around 1000 or 1 1.2 uh, kilo ohms. I couldn't find any resistor on the PCB that has that value or close to it, but uh, this one actually replaces the one I have there. And then I'm supposed to move this 561 over to that, which is 150 ohms. Now I got this handy tool which I 3D printed to bend uh, the pins on these components.
that's moved. Now this one here. Then we have these very large diodes. I already soldered one in. For this I use another size for bending the legs. Yeah, these are really thick legs. Make sure the direction is correct. There's a white band and there's a white band on the label. Such uh, long and thick legs, they will suck away all the heat when you try to solder. So I just uh, cut them before I solder. That makes it easier. Finally, there's a couple of uh, coils, a little close to um, the socket there. I need to put it a little on the side. Not completely straight, but I think that's okay. So these coils or inductors, they can actually vibrate a little bit. So. I'm going to use a little bit of a hot glue just to glue them down. It always becomes really stringy. <laughs> Probably cheap stuff. Not the prettiest gluing, but I'm um, I'm going to cut away some of the strands and uh, remove from the other components. Now we have only the two diodes left and I can never remember the polarity on those symbols. And if it's the long or short. There was a rule I think um, for remembering that but I don't remember the rule. But I'm going to check obviously before I solder them in. Yeah, it was like I thought the cathode is the shorter leg and it's supposed to go here where you have this um, straight line. Final thing is in with the chips, but I'm gonna clean up this board uh, before I um, do that. Obviously there's a lot of uh, flux now on the back side, so I'm gonna clean that up first with some alcohol and regular dishwashing soap and then it should be nice and clean. I think that's it and that's everything correct. I'm not really in a position to test this card because um, I don't have the proper thing to connect it to, but maybe we can just uh, add some 12 volts or what it is as input and see if we get the correct uh, yeah, signals or uh, something on the output, which is uh, this side. But we also need to program the microcontroller all right, that cleaned up nicely. So over to programming and the microcontroller and there's uh, probably lots of ways you can do that. You could connect five volts <laughs> to one of the pins of the microcontroller and then there are some programming pins obviously you can use if you want to make some kind of homemade programmer for a breadboard or something. I'm not going to explore that. Obviously there's uh, official Atmel programmers or something like that. Maybe you can use an Arduino, but I'm gonna use my regular programmer, which I use to program EEPROMs. And that's this one. It's the XGU and uh, it's a TL8662 Plus compatible China clone. So it actually, the software and this uh, programmer actually supports this chip. So it's just a matter of putting it in the correct way. You just um, download one file from uh, the GitHub page and uh, you select the Atmega168 as the chip here. You just need to search for it. It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of different chips here. You select MCU, MPU there and Atmel and then you find it in the list. Load the file. And here you can
can see the content, the bytes uh, of the file, and as you can see, there's not a lot. It's like four or five hundred bytes. But this is compiled from, um, yeah, probably C code that someone programmed back in 2013 or something. Um, yeah, then I just click program and I uncheck the lock bit. I don't want to lock this chip, then press program. And it programmed successfully and it verified. In fact, you can do this several times. Uh, you can program these chips multiple times. And the chip goes in. The legs on your chips are always a little too wide. So just straighten them or bend them a little bit with this uh, bender. And uh, yeah. In with the chip and the direction is uh, this way with the notch. Okay, I was thinking about trying to test this card, but it seems like uh, I cannot do it because uh, this card actually takes 230 volts AC in on two pins. Then it has uh, two 18 volts AC input. I don't have any way to do that securely uh, without <laughs> some kind of setup. I don't have the correct power supply for 18 volts AC. And the way it operates, it obviously converts those, those voltages. The AC probably controls uh, this relay in some way. Yeah, this port connects to a display that shows some uh, numbers. I guess uh, they show uh, the numbers you can win. And I don't have anything like that here. And also the card controls some of the other pins to generate signals for, for controlling some switches and stuff, I think. No, not really sure, but... Um, from the pictures on the GitHub page, you see there's like these micro switches. There's some uh, switches there, some hopper and uh, the card itself is placed like this we saw it before so to use this you actually need the correct machine so it's probably possible to set up a test rig for this but uh, that's not uh, my plan in this video it's supposed to be short anyway that was it for the building hopefully i did everything correctly and it actually works and uh, that's going to be knut's um, responsibility to test it out Sometime later, I'm gonna write a little message in the comments here and give you a status update if it actually worked or not. That was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it and see you later. And thanks a lot for supporting this channel by subscribing and hitting the like button. And a special thanks to my patrons and my members on YouTube. Bye bye.